This week in the boathouse, Steve finishes laying Arabella's four and side decks. And then it's time to learn how to caulk it. While Steve worked on the deck, KP kept plugging away on the cockpit. If you missed it last week, it's being strip built out of extremely dry cedar, glued up in epoxy, and ultimately fiberglassed and painted. Later on in this video, KP and Aiden will be building up the sides of the footwell. And that's as far as the cockpit work will go for now, until the engine and exhaust systems are in. We just found out that it's Aaron's 10th oh. birthday tomorrow, so we're trying to decide what to do. Oh, it is? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Huh. These sugars. What's that? These sugars in the spring. But he does it with like... The old metal. No, he makes his own spiles out of stone. Hey, KP. What do you think? He can get some sugaring supplies for the spring. And 200 should be enough that he can, like, actually, like, legit get some stuff. And um, I was thinking awesome. we can just do it from, from the A to A crew. Me, you, and Ben. Yeah. A fan of the show came to the visitor entrance with a message for his daughters who weren't able to make the trip. Who are you? Where are you from? Yeah. He's videoing or just audio? Yeah, both. Like, both. Girls, say hi to them. Is he videoing also? Yeah, it's on. Oh, okay. You're probably going to have to cut say, out the just first say part. Like so this. we heard. <laughs> Sorry. So my girls weren't able to come today. I got to bring my boys. Uh, Sadie and Eloise just want to say hey and happy birthday in October. So it's either coming soon or just happened. They wish they could be here. Steve, uh, incredible 
to see what you're doing here, man. You're, you're, you're inspiring so many people, dude, to dream really big and to follow your dreams and to pursue it. Uh, I actually started a business because it was a dream that I had and it was kind of scary and it was, it was a big deal to kind of make that jump to quit my job. But like watching what you do, I was like, okay, I think I can do this too. And so it's been so fun. Every Friday, just to watch the video, man. And so to get to come here and see it is cool. I have to recommend for everybody who watches the videos, come see it to like smell what's going on and be able to touch it. And like, you got to come see it. It's pretty cool to have a deck. <laughs> it's been a long time in the making between cutting these trees back in oh, 2016, 2017, and then milling the lumber and waiting for it to dry and milling it down to size and scarfing it and bevels and painting and fairing and laying the deck was about exactly how I hoped it would be. Um, the covering boards took a lot longer. They were, they were a real fight. But I just kept saying through the whole process, like once we get to laying straight decking, once the nib planks are in and we're running straight laid decking, and sure enough, that was the case. And once we got going, the, having the materials all painted and prepped and ready, thank you, Adam and Aiden. You guys did such a great job with that. And uh, just working in soft pine compared to hard and cranky oak and locust, uh, it was a breeze. So I think my, my best day was four or five long straights along the house, along with all of the other myriad of interruptions. Um, but it was amazing to come out here for a day and like put on a big chunk of the four deck. There hasn't been much where you can really see that much visual change in progress in, in just a couple days. Before they show up for work and uh, they find this embarrassing filming. I just want to say how much I've really been enjoying working with KP. Uh, their their energy and exuberance and psych is just it's just really refreshing. Uh, it's such a such an awesome attitude that they have, and their work ethic has been just phenomenal. Uh, so we try to strike a work life balance for the crew. So KP works Monday to Friday, and is it salaried? basically around a 40 hour work week. We don't really keep track of hours, but you know, just put in a good work week and, and we're good. And uh, I would say probably once a month or so, uh, KP at the end of the day on Friday, will be like, hey, I'm gonna see you tomorrow. And I'll often work the weekends. And it's kind of the only time that I get that's, that's quiet in the shop. And uh, I'll be like, why are you coming in on Saturday? And KP will say, well, I just, I didn't get as much done as I wanted to this week. And for us to be in, you know, this position for that video, I, I, I think it would really make a difference. So I'm going to come in for a half day or a full day Saturday and, and get caught up because I just, I don't feel like I got as much done. And that's incredible. I have not worked with too many individuals who would willingly come in basically unpaid on their day off um, because they felt like they didn't get accomplished what they should have got accomplished that week. Thank you. 
the 4200 will actually make cutting the hole for the mast in some ways a little bit easier because we have grain going this way and we have grain going this way. Uh, so where those meet, it's gonna wanna tear out and be a little fussy. And having those glued together, I think will actually kind of make this act as one more big piece of timber as we carve into it. Normally I wouldn't hit the deck in with a hammer like this, but the locust is so hard that I'm not really gonna do much damage to it. And as you can see, this is pretty proud. It needs to get all fair down. So a dent or two in the top's not gonna be a big deal. And I can dent this up all I want because this is where we're gonna cut the hole for the mast. So that'll end up getting disappeared anyways. I know we have a pretty disturbing gap here, but don't worry, that's gonna get cut out when we do the hole for the mast. So, not a problem at all. I did.
No, why not? Because I knew it wasn't going to do much after I did 8 miles on the trail. Oh, nice. Yeah, eight, 8 miles. That's a good trail run. Yeah. Only a few places aft still needed planks, and with the side and foredeck completely laid, it was time to start the caulking process. The cotton caulk, along with the pitch, will keep the deck watertight. When you try to break it, it doesn't break. Like, cotton, for its weight, is stronger than steel. But if you pull it apart, you can disconnect it or reconnect it. Can I see a container a split and a container a hole? So Steven went through and split these. So we have half and whole. And you guys have done more caulking than I have, but none of us are by any means experts. I've probably done the most reading about caulking out of all of us. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm hoping that if we, uh, if we all agree on this plan that we're in pretty good shape. What I've read the most about caulking decks is Either the decking is too thin, they don't caulk it hard enough, or the wood isn't been like oiled, treated enough if it's something other than teak. Um, so our decking is super dry. I don't think without a kiln we couldn't get it any drier. Seams are pretty tight. They're consistent from the table saw. All that seems good. We have an inch and a half of decking to work with. So we got plenty of room to stack cotton in there and still have wood below and a pitch seam above. Um, so what I'm thinking is, Steven brought these little rollers for putting in window screens. And I know that they roll th smaller boats, and I think if we were just to roll this, I think we would be in trouble. But I'm wondering if we take the split and we just give it a couple twists so that it holds some sort of shape. And then if we use the one side's wider, I think we use the narrower side. And that seems like that'll roll in there really nicely. And then I wonder if we go through and we just roll in a thin one on them all. And then we come back with a thinner iron. And then I wonder if we follow it with actually oh. a full one. And with a little bit of a fatter iron and send that home. Now, right now I've been working on one seam for just demonstration purposes. Um, but what I think what we're going to want to do is start from house and work out and roll all of the seams port to starboard for probably six or eight feet, roll that in, and then come in and tap in our first run, you know, working our way up, and then do maybe like four or five feet, and then come back with the double and set up the last few feet so that we've got a couple feet forward rolled, a couple feet forward light, a couple feet forward hard. And then I think we can roll and with the four of us, I think we can split into teams on either side. Someone can roll and when they're ahead of ways, I mean, we could actually roll the full lengths out and just roll the seams from stem to stern. Hard. 
the idea is gentle, right? Yeah, I think the idea is to just to just to set this first speed down there. Okay. Oh yeah. Just just lay it in its home. Everyone took a try on the irons and mallets to practice. And then Jack, who we haven't seen since the hull planking days, was back to help with the caulking and pitching. There's so much like weird guarded knowledge with caulking. It's not hard to do, but it's easy to mess up. And I think that's why people act the way they do. Mm -hmm. um, I'm certainly not a master caulker, but I try and hold my iron in a way that's like nice and comfy because I'm rolling it with that little arc. Like they're all different shapes. And you don't want to like rock the whole thing because that tip can be a problem. But I like to set it in and just give it a little movement and kind of have some flow to how as it rides around across the seam. And I think on this run, we're still just trying to like stuff it down there and fill it up. And I think the last run is when we're gonna wanna tuck and fold, yes, right? for certain. So yeah. in this case, I'm just trying to set myself up for success on the last one. And these little corners are perfect for, so I've got these little bits of cotton that are sticking up. And I want this run to be as even and flat so that the next round of compression makes like a, a perfect um, little cotton triangle when we uh, do the cross cut. So I'm trying to go forward and back, grabbing that, making sure it gets down in there, you know. done this in a while if you can't tell. And you can really feel it bottom out too. And even though this is going to pound it far better than the roller will, if you're worried about what's going on this is like a nice feeler gauge more or less that's pretty flat but you'll you'll feel all the weird bumps with it and you can go back and make sure everything's in the right spot theoretically you just lay it out as nice as you can move forward and move on but for us cool. i got a feeling nice. i'm gonna back with that. not a huge difference so this is the one that we didn't set and then these are the ones that we did Even the one that we didn't set, I mean, it's just a matter of compaction, but it's, it did reach the bottom of the bevel. Yeah. Yeah. And then these are all just, just pull up just a little bit. Mm -hmm. That's a good amount of cotton. I think that seems really good. I think the two halves and the one hole, like we did, that, that seems like that's going to do a trick. I think the volume is perfect, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think it all would be the finesse of getting it right spot, fully compacted, enough, you know. Are you... Welcome to KP Shoe Repair. I'm also a cobbler. <laughs> Can't you tell? KP's got some extra epoxy, so. Are you then gonna just tape that and continue to walk around on them today? Absolutely. I don't have any other shoes with me. And those are all kind of falling apart too. What do you mean, I need tape? I mean, you, I know you don't get paid a ton, but you certainly it's, get paid enough to buy a pair of shoes. It's not that bad, folks. Steve does pay me, but I, you know. The rest of the shoe's still pretty good. I do need <laughs> tape, though. There, that'll hold up for a week. 
probably order new shoes. <laughs>